Hi, my name is Josh Bashinsky, and welcome to another session of Mastering Google SEO for 2012. This month is July, and this month we're going to have Link Apocalypse or Link Apalooza, depending on how you want to look at it. We're going to take a look at making links uh, these days, what are the uh, tips and tricks that we can use for the best practices. And then if you fail on that, what we can do to, de to delete the links. Uh, if you've had an oops moment, and maybe you've had the a natural link notice, or perhaps you've had uh, some problems with the indexed links, or finally with that pesky penguin, I'll show you what you can do to delete the links after you've uh, run into some trouble. So let's get to the video. Okay, so here are some links, do's and don'ts. Um, basically, everything you want to do for SEO, you want to present natural signals. Everything you do, you want it to look as natural as possible. Um, uh, John Mueller, which is a, who is a Google employee who posts on their product forms quite often, mentioned this very recently in the product forms. And as an aside, I suggest you set up a Google alert to tell you whenever John Mueller says something new on the internet, because usually it's golden uh, advice in terms of uh, SEO, especially if you can read between the lines of what he's saying. He recently said that he has, they have linking algorithms that look for genuine recommendations. So they specifically have algorithms looking for genuine recommendations. So that's what you want every single link to look like. And they also have algorithms that look for bought, sold, traded, or placed yourself, links that are placed yourself. That is, looking like this in any way, shape, or form is exactly what it is you want to avoid. So uh, what, is that, uh, what can we extract from that, including uh, all the other experiments and research we've seen so far? Well, basically, I would recommend this. I would recommend you want at least 90% of your links to be editorial, that is to say, in the main content. Do follow links. Uh, you do want a little bit of no follow links, but because that would look natural, but not a hell of a lot. And again, these are general recommendations also backed up with some specific experiments that I've done previously and also some experience that I have. So, but, but more or less, that's what would uh, look like genuine recommendations. That's what would look as natural as possible to have 90% or so, these are rough numbers, editorial or in-content links, uh, links. So, you know, a program like SE Nuke does this very well, right? Um, and that's the kind of thing you want to be focusing on. Furthermore, on all the links on pages like uh, Web 2.0 profiles or forum profiles that don't have a main text uh, of, of a page, at the very least you want to have at least two or three sentences around the link that uh, are speaking on the same topic of what the target page is about. And you don't have to stuff that full of keywords. You don't want it to say red apples, red apples, red apples, red apples again and again and again. Obviously, you don't want to do that. But you know, written for humans, uh, human readable sentences about that topic around the link. Also, in terms of thresholds, it's a very good practice just to make sure, uh, in, in case of any penalties that might be uh, built in the uh, unnatural link notice, which I'll mention in a second, but also the uh, the strange generic anchor text boost that I discovered last video. And if you uh, don't know what I'm talking about, go see my last video about more information on this. But this is the best thresholds to have. You don't want all generic, like some people are saying these days, because they're all uh, super paranoid about Penguin, and they don't even know what they're paranoid about, because Penguin has very little to do with links directly, as I've already shown in experiments in the previous last two videos. But you do want to have a general, basic, kind of overall uh, mixture. Why? Because it looks more natural that way, right? So you don't want to get rid of exact match, because that's exactly what's going to help you rank, but at the same time, you don't want to have all exact match, because that looks super, super spammy, and again, might play a role. If you get a manual review, it'll definitely not pass a manual review, and it could very well play a role algorithmically in terms of the unnatural link notice. So that's why I suggest you have about 30% exact match, so if the keywords you want to optimize for were red apples, about 30% of your links would have the phrase red apples in there somewhere. 30% partial match, so again, if it's red apples you're going for, uh, your partial match anchor text would say red and or apples, or would say red and apples in the anchor text but not beside each other. Looking for apples, go red, click here, that kind of a thing. And again, 30% generic. Um, click here, here, uh, great side about apples, you know, some kind of general kind of topical link uh, that you could imagine someone donating to you, right? All links are supposed to look like labels. All links are supposed to look like they're donated by somebody else. So what would someone else say about your site? And very important, uh, I found that this is very important, all of these links 
it would be best if you at least you know 70% of them or so at, at the very least again there's just general numbers I'm throwing out but but to give you a rule of thumb to follow if they all have natural stop words in them like click here great site for in even in your exact match links you can have a few that just say red apples that's the entire link that's all it says but if it makes if and only if it would make sense for someone out there to give you that as a general recommendation you know the link just says red apples that happens to the blogosphere quite a bit so it's not that alien and I've done tests and and you know you know this is important to do but it's not a hard rule that I've found. So again, you want to make sure that uh, a good a good high percentage, I'd say 50 to 70 percent of any or all of these links have some kind of natural stop word, some the uh, you know some extra verbiage in there, so it looks more natural, like some human wrote it uh, as a general donation donated link or a recommendation. And finally, it's very important to have redundancy in all of your linking. You want to build every single link that you build, you want to make sure you have the ability to remove it just in case you've messed up in some way. And to do that, you want to build your links to rotating 301 pages or 301 directives in an HD access file. Um, uh, that way you could remove each and every link. You can cut off that link juice if you need to. Or, and, not or, but and as well, disposable sub pages. Uh, sub pages that uh, you can get, re you can remove easily, you can rename, but they all interlink uh, consistently, and so you're routing that link juice through your, your site. Uh, this way, you can easily remove any bad link juice that you need to. Okay, so here's a list of things that you don't want to do when it comes to linking. The main one that I see that is the most problem is you don't want to link to your root domain. What, you ask? This is, has this not been the practice for the last 10 years in SEO? Yes, but now it is not. <laughs> you don't want to link to your root domain. You don't want to link directly to whatever.com slash. You always want to specify a page or a 301 in the link. Even if you're linking to .com slash index.html. This way, at the very least, you have the option of switching that page out to default.html or index.php. It would, of course, be better if you always linked to .com slash default.html and that page had a rel canonical to index.html. And so that way, if your linking ever went bad, even if you're linking right to your main root directory or, the, or your index page, that way you can delete default.html, you can robot that out, and that link juice gets cut off. But if you've been linking only to your root domain, .com or .org slash, and that's it, then you're in trouble because there's no way to cut off that link juice without changing the domain. Next, you don't want to use du duplicate text in your backlink pages. You always want to make sure your backlink pages, if you're creating them, are over 60% at the very least. I prefer over 80 or 90% because generally handwritten articles that people write are usually only about 90% uh, unique so if you can get your spot articles about 90% unique then that's as good as the real thing right and Nuke is great for allowing you to do that because it allows nested spinning which is very important uh, it's very hard to get above 80 or 90% without nested spinning probably impossible not only this but uh, you don't want to use only your own IP addresses and your own sites uh, sites that are owned by you in the, the Whois uh, in, on your domain registrar or from your own IP address or your own C block of IP addresses. You want to avoid that because then it looks placed yourself, right? You don't want to focus on one type of link. You just don't want to focus on footer links or sidebar links or forum profile links or web profile links. Uh, you want to have uh, the biggest range of links possible from many different sources. It'll be harder to, uh, to identify some kind of manipulative tactic that way. Also, you don't want to use any names in your linking that doesn't make any sense, especially famous ones. If your site has nothing to do with Lady Gaga, you don't want any Lady Gaga links because that could look manipulative like you're trying to uh, link bomb your site, trying to make your site rank for Lady Gaga. And I've seen sites have huge problems with this before. So try to avoid that. Uh, furthermore, you don't want to forget that your exact match money keyword uh, in your URL also counts towards that 30% threshold I said for exact match keywords. If you're, uh, if you're trying to optimize for red apples and you got redapples.com, you don't want to think, oh, it's perfectly safe to build uh, you know, a good chunk of links to redapples.com because that's my domain. It looks natural. Google uh, 
knows very well that that's an exact match money keyword. In fact, they probably gave you the tool you use to check, right? Google AdWords keyword tool. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, I've seen uh, spam thresholds get a little too high and it starts making me nervous, right? So uh, I would try to avoid, if you have, a, if you have uh, some brand, you know, uh, uh, Josh's Apple Emporium, if that .com, if that is the name of your site, well then you could probably link to that a little bit more strongly. But if it's an exact match money keyword, you want to try and tone that down. Just stay under the radar. And the next thing is, this is another point on the exact topic. You don't want to use more than, again, a general rule of thumb, 30% obvious search query links. A link is supposed to be a label donated by somebody else. It is not supposed to be a search query that people type in. I can't think of a good example off the top of my head, but for example, if you uh, had the links information on red apples, that would make sense because it not only is that labeling what this site is about, it's got information on red apples, but that's also what someone t types in. That's perfect. But you know, sometimes, and I, again, sorry, I can't leave an example, but sometimes something is just something someone types in. Uh, you know, how do I get red apples, question mark, and then if you make that the link, that looks less and less natural. That's probably still okay, but you know what I mean. Sometimes you see a link which is obviously just someone, something is, uh, so, so something someone is typing in and not a generally donated link. Here's another important part. If you have a new site, I have an experiment actually to prove this, that maybe I'll share, maybe not, it's not super exciting, but if you have a new site, you do not want to exceed the amount of do follow links you send to it, especially if the new site doesn't have any traffic. If, you have, if you're younger than six months, you have to have some traffic in order to get some links, which makes sense. If you're not getting any traffic, then who is donating these links to you, right? Because Google does not allow you to, to place any links yourself, and they have algorithms designed to, to look for this. That's against their webmaster guidelines, as ridiculous as it is. So I would suggest you actually buy traffic for younger sites the cheapest way you possibly can. Twitter is a good source for traffic. If you've got a good Twitter network or a good social network built up, or if you have a forum you can post on, getting traffic to your site. Even if it's unrelated, even if they don't convert, it's just good as a general background noise, as a signal to justify why this new site is getting links. And you don't want to build too many links, you know, 10 a month to start, and then, you know, if you're getting 200 to 300 unique visitors, you can get 200 to 300 to 400 to 500, you can build up those kinds of links, that kind of a deal. So you could actually try to convince Google that you've gone viral or some kind of thing if you if you build more links than that. And I have actually have an experiment, an experiment to show. I don't know the exact thresholds, but but I do know this is this is the case. Uh, furthermore, you don't want to stuff your backlink pages with keywords, especially if they're hidden keywords. And this includes tags. As you uh, probably know, all the content management systems these days usually have something called a tag, which is uh, kind of a, a metadata for that for that article. You don't want to stuff that full of 50 different or 60 different tags. Matt Cutts has gone and directly specifically said this. They don't like tags. They see it as keyword stuffing. So if you're going to use tags, limit it to one or three. Uh, linking programs like Nuke are good because you can limit the amount of tags that you put in there. Some of them don't let you limit it. Some of them just stuff it full. And you always want to write for uh, for humans. Uh, make sure that the keyword is not mentioned any more than one to four times throughout the entire linking article, uh, and only once or twice around that link, right? And don't forget about other keywords. Uh, everyone fixates kind of on their head terms, the, the, the big uh, money-making terms, the most traffic terms. 80%, you know, 70-80% of the traffic that a website gets is from long-tail traffic, so don't forget about the other keywords that you can optimize for. If you have to limit the head terms, well, you can throw in a bunch of other keywords in there, right, as well, and try to rank for those kinds of things. Uh, and, and make sure Google knows that you're associated with those kinds of other keywords, right? All about frequency. And finally, you want to avoid, again, any of these kinds of semantics. You don't want to link uh, too much on any pages that have these kind of semantics, any greater than 10%, in my opinion, because this can get you into trouble for the uh, unnatural link notice, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So you want to try to avoid too many footer links, too many sidebar links. I have actually had a site that was hit specifically because I had sidebar links. Uh, I know because the site only had 30 links, and when I uh, told them that these cyber links are perfectly natural, they removed the uh, natural link notice. I didn't have to delete a single link. Uh, so I know that they have a problem with sidebar links. Uh, or if it says free cipher links, SEO links here, uh, you know, th those kind of things. Those are what you want to avoid the most, but you also want to avoid if it says sponsored, right? If it says paid or sponsored links, you want to try to avoid that because that would be one of the main semantics they'll use to try and determine if it's a paid link or not. And again, not too many free article sites. Um, you want to, you can link to them a bit, 
And uh, the older you are, the more you can link to them. But if you're a new site especially, you don't want your article sites to be over 10%. So again, that's another great thing about a program like AC Nuke is that you can specify the exact links that you want to uh, link to or not. So that's some of the don'ts. What happens if you run afoul of some of these problems and you have to delete some of these links because you were hit by either the unnatural link notice or maybe you had some, uh, you were using some, uh, some lesser linking programs that uh, Got, were hit with heavy de-indexation, or you uh, maybe got uh, bit by a penguin and you have, want to see if you can delete some links, how you can do that. Let me show you some, uh, some ways you can uh, do that and how those different algorithms work. Okay, so what if you, uh, by accident or someone on purpose, has linked to you in a way that uh, Google's algorithms think makes you look manipulative? What can you do to delete these links, or what is otherwise affectionately known in the industry as link unbuilding? Well, the first thing I want to say is stay calm. A lot of people are freaking out about their links, and as soon as they have the slightest drop in rankings, they want to go and start pulling links to their site. This is the... Uh, deleting links is the exact last thing you want to do in a checklist of SEO, why did my site stop ranking kind of list. Uh, there could be a hundred other reasons why you drop for some keywords. Personalization, geolocation, other sites are just outranking you now, a general algorithmic change. Um, so you want to get an SEO professional to actually do an analysis to figure out why that site's not ranking so well. You don't necessarily have to go and delete your links, and you don't even necessarily have to go delete your links even if you have bad links, which we're going to talk about in a second. But let's say for the sake of argument, you do have some bad links and you were hit by uh, one of these algorithms. These are the three uh, main reasons that are going on right now that I could possibly think that you would want to delete your links, other than you know a manual review is coming, but unless you submitted for one, you will never know that a manual review is coming for your site. So the only reason why you'd want to go and delete your links is whether if you receive the unnatural link notice, um, you are using uh, some uh, less than reputable uh, linking sources and uh, some of their uh, splogs, their uh, spam blogs have been de-indexed by Google en masse, or you, uh, you may have uh, got hit on a specific penguin date, the April, April 24th, May 25th, those specific dates are the, uh, that I can think off the top of my head, are the last published uh, penguin dates. So if you were, went down on those dates, you might have a, a, bite, a penguin bite as well. So let's talk about these three algorithms, what they are, and uh, how you would delete these links exactly, how you would find the links and delete them. Okay, the unnatural link notice, what is it? Well, the unnatural link notice is a manual action taken by Google, that's the words they use, manual action, otherwise known as a penalty. It is a timed penalty, that means it has a duration. Uh, of at least six months, I've seen it last as long as two years. Uh, so it is timed. You can wait it out. John Mueller says you can wait it out, but he doesn't recommend that you do. I believe the reason for that is one, because it takes so long to go away, and two, it, it puts a black mark on you, so to speak, and you might be extra susceptible to the manual penalties. There is a threshold. John Mueller has stated that they will ignore suspect links up to a certain percent. I, I'm guessing, say, around 30 or 40%, you know, depending on how draconic they want to be. Maybe more, maybe less. That's just my guess. But at some point, there is a hard line, and they will demote. Again, this is still a manual uh, penalty. But they will demote when it gets to a certain threshold, and those uh, suspect links are going to start causing you negative problems. It is page-based. Uh, John Mueller has specifically said that you can 4-4 subpages, you can rename subpages, and the bad link juice point of those pages goes away. And, or you can submit a request, a uh, request for re-inclusion. And in that request for re-inclusion, you basically have to state, uh, here's the bad links that I've tried to delete. Uh, uh, here's the ones I've deleted. Here's the ones I've tried to delete. I've contacted them. They haven't gone back to me. I'm very sorry. I've tried to be white hat. I'll never do it again. You have to show good faith and make them believe that in the future you're not going to try any more of these black hat kind of tactics. And that's the point. Once that uh, submission is, is made, it takes about a month or so these days for it to be re for them to respond to you. And uh, unlike uh, previously in the beginning of the year where you would get an, uh, an automatic response saying you haven't done enough, uh, 
it, now it appears that you do get a manual response after the month, and these uh, penalties have to be manually removed. I don't know if they're algorithmically applied. I believe they probably are. But I know for a fact they have to be manually removed. And uh, Google has recently uh, stated that in, in January of this year, they have already have a massive uh, operation in India and uh, around the rest of the world uh, uh, of manpower to do this. But I also want to note that the manual action or the unnatural link notice is not the same. Any link notice you get in Google Webmaster Tools is not the same as their algorithmic adjustments, such as Panda or Penguin. Uh, or the page, line, uh, the page layout, layout algorithm, or any of those kind of algorithmic adjustments that they make. They are not the same. They're totally different. Oh, and just as a reminder uh, that I want to mention, if you recently received the unnatural link notice on July the 19th or 20th or so, you can ignore that. If you received it previous to that, you cannot ignore that. That means previous to that, they were only sending out the notice when they have pretty much 90% surely uh, put a, a manual action on your site. And so if you want to get that lifted, you have to delete some links and show them that you have deleted some links. Show them that uh, uh, you've tried to delete the links, you're showing good faith moving forward. However, Matt Cutts went so far, the, uh, Google's made a little boo-boo, and Matt Cutts posted on his, on his uh, Google Plus profile, I'll link to it, that basically if you receive the notice on July 19th or 20th, it's a mistake. They're now sending up to be more transparent they're now sending out more uh, notices even when they're just ig ignoring links. So even when they're just ignoring links, there's nothing you can do, there's nothing you have to do, they're going to send out a notice as well. Unfortunately, the copy of the, the notice is exactly the same as the one they send out when they have demoted some links and you have to go and delete them. So he specifically stated on his Google Plus profile that if you receive the notice around July 19th or 20th, you can ignore that unless your rankings drop in a few weeks later. If you want to be absolutely safe, you can start deleting links now, but again, I would not recommend that. I would recommend to wait to see if your rankings drop, and then you'll know, oh, okay, that was a real notice on the 19th or 20th where I actually had to delete links, and not just Google's mistake that oh, we're ignoring some links now, but we're going to send you the same letter as if we had uh, put some negative link juice on links. So, thanks, Google. And so, make sure you keep that in mind, that July 19th or 20th, you can ignore that unless your rankings go down. Okay, the last two reasons that I'm going to cover today of why you would want to ever delete links are that you have some de-index blogs in your backlink profile, or maybe the Penguin algorithm has spam flagged some of your backlink pages and they're now passing negative uh, link juice. So the question is, how do I diagnose these bad links and uh, how do I delete them exactly? How do I specify which ones I should be deleting? The, the short answer is, well, basically you need a tool to do this. There is only one tool in the market that I know that uh, allows you to do this, that is pretty easy to use, and this is Kemper Link Tools. Um, I can offer a, a link to uh, the Kemper Link Tools. It's the one that I use. It's one that I use for all my SEO work. And I can also offer a 10% off for any of uh, the nukers uh, watching this video. Um, so uh, you don't have to use that tool, but quite frankly, I honestly don't know of any others that will let, let you do this as easily. And, uh, in fact, I'll run through the tool. I'll let you see how it works for both of these, trying to find them and delete them, and you can uh, judge for yourself. So I'm going to break into a tutorial for a bit, and then I'll come back to wrap things up. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, how to get into uh, Camper Link Tools and how to uh, check for de-indexed uh, uh, blog links and for uh, Penguin uh, links and some other linking metrics that they have. So what you want to do is you want to go to Camper Link Tools. And you can go click on this one here to uh, linkresearchtools.com. That's where you want to go. I've already gone there. I've already logged in. So uh, it'll take me right to there. So I'm not going to go through how to purchase. Obviously, you guys know how to purchase. You'll want to get the Superhero Tools Kit. The Superhero Tools Kit. Now, that's about uh, 150 American a month. Now, I know uh, for some of you, that's going to be fairly pricey. Uh, I do have a code that will give you 10% off of that. But uh, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, if you need to check your links, this is the only tool I know that will do it. So uh, it's money well spent. And again, you don't have to keep it. I mean, I use it uh, for all my SEO stuff because it's a pretty good tool, as you're about to see. But uh, you can certainly uh, just get it for a month. 
check your links and delete the ones you need to delete and then cancel the uh, product. Just make sure to do it before the next month so they don't bill you for another month. So, um, so I mean, there you go. You can give that a shot. But it's got to be the Superhero Toolkit because you need access to this one here. It's called the Backlink Profiler. This is the, uh, the, the report that you want to run in uh, Link Research Tools. So if I click on that, this is exactly the metrics that you want to use. So you would obviously paste your domain in there, right? So you put a real one in there. Now you could just do it to the domain depending on how many links you have. Or if you have lots of links, you might just want to do it to the page. And, and uh, each page that seems to be uh, uh, penalized. Uh, also, you can also upload your own backlinks. And if you go to the five times link boost, you can upload up to 10,000 backlinks. So you can get quite a lot of uh, linking data in here, which is quite nice. So we will just set up this test site. We'll do a five times link boost. And these are the ones you want to use. These are the metrics you want to use to make sure you're getting all the data. You can do quite a few of these, but I'm just going to do I would just do link check, basic SEO stats, make sure you get the title rank metric, that's very important, the title rank, uh, rank metric. Also if you want to see if how well you're ranking locally, you could try the link source uh, country and city. Also if you want to see the C blocks and IP addresses linking to you, you could try the advanced link counts as well. So that's the kind of thing I would do, I would set that up. So the link check, basic SEO stats, title rank, the bare minimum and you could also add the link source and advanced link counts or a link source for the country and city to see if you can rank local or not and the advanced link counts for the uh, for the IP addresses linking to you and the C blocks linking to you. Okay so then I would go down here and click run report and uh, it would uh, turn on that it would take a little bit of time so I've already run one on this test site here this is a site uh, I found on a, a Google product forum so, um, you know, I'm not outing anybody. This guy already posted his site up on the Google product form so anybody could use it. I'm hoping no, no one here will just take it and negative SEO it. He seems to be a nice enough guy, so let's leave him alone. But uh, John Mueller commented on this particular site that it was just, and I quote, just above threshold for, for being low quality. So this is a good site to check to know what kind of the levels are that Google is using for different things. So um, so once it runs, you see you have a bunch of metrics here. These are the ones, I'm not going to run through them all. I'm not doing a demo for Kemper. I'm just trying to show you how you would clean your links. But I'm just going to show you a few of the highlights. So um, the Power Trust is pretty good. Now, what this tells me, Power Trust is their proprietary uh, page rank uh, you know, approximation, just like SEO Moz has Moz rank or Page Authority. Majestic has their uh, citation flow and trust flow. Kemper has power trust. They all have their uh, page rank approximation, right? And uh, so this one here tells me that the uh, a, the vast majority of their backlinks, 660 of them, have uh, very low power and trust. The power seems to be a little bit better. The trust is a little bit worse. Uh, you know, so that tells you where you need to uh, kind of uh, throw your link juice if you want to improve all that. Some other very interesting things that they have is that they'll tell you, you know, link type, text, or image, and also link location. They'll actually do uh, algorithmic uh, kind of a, an analysis, and it'll tell you where your uh, links are coming from if they're in the content, they're in a sidebar. All right, this is very important for the unnatural link notice. Um, I know that Google has a problem with sidebar links, and I know they have a problem sometimes with footer links and sometimes with link lists. So those are, uh, you can specify you can, you can uh, uh, check those kind of just a, a, at a glance in the graph and then you can also go down here into the, um, into the uh, specific report and find where those links are. So and you can specify show me only the link list, show me only the footer link. So that's very useful uh, for cleaning up your backlinks. For the unnatural link notice, that's one. The next one as well is the tile rank. Now this is a very important metric. Uh, that uh, I helped uh, Kemper put into their tools. This is the uh, approximate ranking of your backlink pages by their title. So for these pages, 465 backlink pages for this particular uh, website, their, uh, their backlink pages rank 60 plus for their own title tag. Now this is a very good uh, metric to use for two things. One, if the link is even worth having, 
because if the link doesn't, uh, uh, if the backlink page does not rank for its own title tag, like these ones here do, rank one to three for their own unique title tag, that's uh, probably a bad sign with some caveats, which I'll talk about in a second. But two, also, this metric is what I use to diagnose probably if there was a penguin penalty. This looks like it's pretty bad, but trust me, this would be two or three times higher if this site had hit by, been hit by penguin. So these, the 60 plus links, those are the, the worst ones. That, that's where I would immediately start deleting links for the unnatural link notice and for if we're having any penguin problems. And the on-page fixes don't seem to be ha helping with the penguin problems. Here's another thing to look at is they also show you what links are de-indexed. No IDX means it's not in the Google index. So this particular site only has 124. Sites that have been linking to the Splog networks that were de-indexed, this number is way higher. It's like this number here. This bar goes right, right, right off the roof. So if you want to start deleting those links because you think they could be hurting you, and uh, in my experience, it doesn't seem like it's very good to keep those links uh, on the de-indexed uh, uh, blogs there. Or if you've had um, the unnatural link notice, you know that the de-indexed links are probably not giving you any benefit at all, and those would be the first ones you'd want to go delete. So uh, uh, the no index links and the 60 plus links is where you want to start for um, when you get the unnatural link notice of what links to delete. Because here's the name of the game, and this is what's important. You want to make sure you only delete links that are not helping you, right? You don't want to delete the links that seem to be the backlink pages are ranking healthy, right? And they seem to ha they have a lot of power and trust. So you want to make sure you delete the links that are at, at, at best useless, and at worst, actually hurting you. So those are the kind of links that you want to go delete, right? And so this tool has a lot of different metrics you can use to cross, uh, to cross list and to delete those links, that, to, to nail down, to specify the exact links you want to delete that are not helping you and, in fact, probably hurting you. And that's why I love this tool is because it gives you the ability to narrow it down in a very scientific way. It's not just some SEO guy making their uh, from-the-hip guess you know, oh, I don't like this site, I think it's spammy in quotations, and that's the links you'll delete, when for all you know, those footer links, even though they hate them, could have been actually good links, because that page ranks really well, and it has a lot of power or trust, right? So, furthermore, you can also see what, uh, what uh, backlinks your linking pages have. Now, this is another issue that this site has a little bit, but it's older, so it's, it doesn't matter. This is a really old domain, but if this was a newer domain, this graph here would, would spell for me a problem if I was doing an SEO analysis on this page. You notice that for 754 of, of his uh, couple thousand backlinks he has uh, listed here, you'll notice this is where the, the list links they're all, all total that they're looking at, right? Now, that might not be all their links, but I could have uploaded more links if I wanted to when I ran the report. You'll notice that 754, the vast majority of the links, have no backlinks themselves. They have zero backlinks. That means that, you know, a bunch of his linking pages have no backlinks themselves. This is what's called a truncated page rank problem, right? So this could be a big issue for this website if it was a newer website. It's an older website, an older domain, so it probably is not suffering. But you would not want this to be a problem. So this is why uh, a program like SE Nuke is a good linking program because it allows you to build backlinks to your backlink pages. It allows you to build tier two links to your tier one pages. And so if Google saw this on a younger site, this could very well be a, a truncated page rank problem that you want to avoid. You want to make sure that most of your links have at least one or two backlinks. Uh, more, more is even better. So uh, how would I actually go about deleting links? Well, what I would do is I would come down here to the report and I would extend this out here so you could see more. I would increase it to 100 entries, right? And this is where I can drill down and do all of my data. Now, uh, actually, what I would probably do, I, was, I would export it to C a CSV and go to Excel and work on it that way. But I'll just show you here just to, just to get the general idea. So basically, what I would do here is I would start narrowing down what links I want to delete. So let's say I only want the, the 60 uh, uh, links here. So this is immediately showing me the 60 plus links and the no IDX links. These are going to be the ones that are probably not going to be the best links, right? So I'm going to narrow it down that way. Then I'd also would narrow it down in terms of, uh, oh, let's see, uh, the link location. Let's say I just wanted to get rid of the sidebar links and those links. 
So that would narrow it down further, right? So I've got all the no, uh, all the de-index links that are all in the sidebar. Those are kind of the ones that I could start deleting, and then I could start clicking on these and checking those out to see if those are links that I can delete. Furthermore, I could also, if I wanted to, I could also uh, do it in terms of the backlinks, right? So these are all links that have zero backlinks. So they're ranking above, uh, these ones are the no indexed ones. Okay, so now we've got some of the 60 plus ones. So it's not uh, ranking for this title tag specifically. So that tells me that this page is either, uh, either a, a worthless link or it could very well be uh, penalized. And they're also narrowed down to the sidebar. And I would check out the number of uh, backlinks that page particularly has. And these are going to be pages that are probably not the best uh, backlinks for you and could very well even be um, part of the uh, linking problem, whatever it is, the unnatural link notice. Uh, that would be where you want to start. You don't want to delete healthy links. You want to delete bad links. Uh, or the uh, penguin uh, problem could be real, very well be those links as well, because again, penguin hit pages are not going to rank very well, so they're going to be they're going to be the ones that are 60 plus in the uh, title rank, going to be the penguin pages, and the no IDX are going again that's the de-indexed pages. You can also delete those as well, probably safely, because uh, they're probably not helping you at all. Um, so that, that's where I would start if I had the unnatural link notice. And I could just click here to go see that actual page, the backlinking pages. I want to check it out myself. And then, uh, so that's how I would uh, run those. Um, and again, there's all different kinds of metrics that we could use if we wanted to. Uh, I could also break them down to follow or no follow. I could break them down to text or image links as well. And uh, I could uh, break them down to the backlink, uh, number of backlinks they have. I could select just the ones with power or uh, the, the no power or power trust. So it's a very useful tool to be able to narrow down very quickly what links it is I'm going to decide to delete. Or if I decided, okay, well, I know I just did a run of footer links and I know that they weren't doing so well. Or I just did a run of footer links. So let's see the footer links that are 60 plus. You know, here's uh, some ones here. These are probably going to be all comment links this person's done, right? So that will immediately tell you what kind of links you might want to go deleting. So uh, so there you go. So once you delete those links, uh, if you had the unnatural link notice uh, before July 19th or 20th, then you want to go delete those links. Tell Google, hey, I deleted all this list of links. I also contacted these sites and deleted these links. Uh, you know, I'm very sorry. Uh, you know, I had a, sh a shady SEO, but now I want to move forward with a full white hat. I want to be completely above board. Again, I'm very sorry. I'm going to use only white hat tactics from now on. I'm going to use social tactics, you know, and uh, trying to show good faith moving forward. If they don't believe good faith, they're not going to lift the penalty, right? And then for Penguin, what you'd want to do is find all these links. You'd want to find all the links that are 60 plus, and then you want to go and check those pages, make sure they're actually 60, not ranking in Google, because this is just a report. It's a program. You know, it's good, but it's not infallible, right? You want to make sure that the reason why, like, Aspiring Couture, that is a very generic title, very short, so it may not be a ranking uh, very highly for that title because it's a very uh, competitive niche and it's not a very unique title. But for this one here, I need the perfect tote bag for high school, you know, there's not going to be many other, that's a very unique title, there's not going to be many other titles like that. So if this page is not ranking within the 60 top spots for that title, there's probably something wrong with that page, right? So you can go check it out. And that's how you narrow down the list of what pages to delete uh, for Penguin. And I know it helps. I've, I have an experiment to prove it. I have a couple of experiments now to prove, and I've seen sites start making recoveries. So getting rid of Penguin is not that hard. Okay, so uh, that's the basic tutorial. And uh, if you have any questions about that, by all means, uh, post them in the comments or try and contact me over Twitter. And again, if uh, you just want to delete your links, you don't have to have this tool forever, although I use it, my favorite tool for link analysis for sure. Um, again, you could just get it for the month and then uh, make sure you cancel before the end of the month so you don't ding you. Okay, so th that's how you can find uh, the bad links and how you can delete them and with the three algorithms of why you'd want to do that, the unnatural link notice. Maybe you have some de-indexed uh, backlinks you want to try and cleaning up. And yeah, maybe there's a combination there as well. And maybe Penguin has uh, given you a bite. So you can delete those links and your rankings will improve. 
So uh, that's the video for uh, this month. I also want to mention that uh, based on the comments I get, I know a lot of people are confused about how SEO is working these days, and rightfully so, it's getting much more complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be offering an SEO Hangout on Google+, uh, uh, with myself, and I'm going to also invite other people from the SEO industry to join in uh, when and if they have a chance. I'm going to run this every Tuesday at 5.45 p.m. Pacific Time. That's Pacific Time and it'll be running for one hour. So you can drop in, you can ask questions, and you can get answers. I will try to do the Hangout on air, meaning it'll be recorded on YouTube, so if you can't actually join in uh, with the Hangout, you can at least watch it. Uh, the pros are that I'm going to be trying to help explain people, answers people question how to do SEO. The cons are you have to join Google Plus in order to uh, participate. So I'm afraid that's where the tool is. So uh, at the, don't forget that SEO Hangout with myself uh, every Tuesday at 5.45 p.m. Pacific time, and otherwise, if you have any other comments, you can always uh, Twitter, you can always uh, email me as well. I'll try and answer in the comments below, and you can come talk to me uh, on Google+. So uh, good luck with your links, and uh, I wish you well in the rankings.